Hello, footy fans, and welcome back to the Chip and Chase podcast. We're here back for a Wednesday, a round review for round six of the NRL Supercoach season. Looking forward ahead to round seven as well. We're riding quite high right now, not just because of our ranks, but because the Warriors have just announced the signing of James Fisher Harris on a four year deal from 2025 onwards. So we're Feeling pretty happy now as, as a Waz fan myself. Pretty happy about that. But we're here to talk some super coach. If you're listening on an audio platform, please head over to the YouTube channel. We've got the face cam going. We've got the, the visual format, got the, the footy stuff up on the screen, the stats, how my team went. So if you want to engage with that or you just want to, you know, uh, connect a bit more with me, head over to the YouTube. That's where this one will be. We also had some technical issues last week, which led to this podcast not getting uh, put out on audio platforms. So the only place to see this one was the YouTube. Hopefully that won't be the case this week and we will just be able to um, post it across all of the platforms, audio and uh, video alike. But once again, wherever you're tuning in, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll get right into it. So as you can see on the screen, if you're watching this one on YouTube, we ended up with a score of 1,243 for round six, ranked us in the top 8%, really happy with that. We're building really nicely. I'm so happy with how my squad uh, is going. So that one put us up 7,985 ranks up into a season rank of 12,012. So pretty, uh, pretty darn happy just outside the, the top 10K, which is, which is fine. Look, early season, you're happy to be a bit further out because you know that you've got a strong side, a lot of uh, cash building, everything going well which I, I think is happening with my side. I'm really happy with how that's all transpiring there. So, yeah, not quite in the top 10K and, you know, not top 1,000 or anything yet, which is the goal we'd like to – I mean, the goal is to win, but top 1,000, top 1%, around that mark is where we want to be uh, as a pretty professional oh, – professional is not the word, but, you know, someone who takes this quite seriously, who takes their super coach quite seriously, their footy quite seriously. And is, as a content creator for you guys, I want to be doing well. So the information I can provide, the, the stats and intel that I can give is is reliable for you guys. And, you know, you can, you can improve off the back of that. So at the moment, yeah, just outside that top 10K, really happy with that. As I said, we'll, we'll continue to move up. And, yeah, a score of 1,243, pretty good. I think – 1200 1300s uh, were really good this week if you got 1400 you're incredible um but yeah just a lot of things went right this week not so much went wrong like as of last week where we had a few things go wrong but we'll get straight into i guess the the team wrap up and, and how it all transpired so you can see that on the screen there all of my stats for those listening i'll read through them starting with the hookers brandon smith he scored me 84 points another try for brandon smith really good yeah, yeah, he looks exceptional. He does look really good from a footy standpoint this year. Super coach has been a bit hit or miss. You know, he's there's been 30s, he's been 40s, but every now and then you get this sort of 84. Actually, this is his highest score of the season, so it's not every now and then. But I'm hoping it's a bit more frequently from now on. I'm looking to probably run him as my second hooker for the remainder of the season. For now, he's definitely sitting sitting pretty as my number one option, and I'll look to upgrade jo Joey Lusick in a bit. While we're on Joey Lusick, 72 points from him on the bench will. Saying last week that he's sort of hit his his peak and it's time to sell. Well, 72, that has helped him out immensely. Didn't play him, so I didn't score that, which is fine. But yeah, it's uh, put the break even back down to, what is that break even at? 17. So he's looking to make a little bit more cash. And then maybe in a week or two, we'll look to move him on to someone like Harry Grant or Wade Egan, who you guys know I'm quite huge on. Moving into the front row department, Terrell May, massive bounce back from his 21-point game last week, 86 from him, massive minutes. I think he played about 56 minutes straight off the bench. So really happy with it, with his 86 score. I mean, everyone should be quite happy with an 86 score, no matter who it's from. But to get that in the front row department, really good stuff there. Unfortunately, the front row partner that I've had with him, Tavita Totola, he went down with an injury. So seven points from Tavita. I forgot about that. So I guess there was something that went wrong with my side, and I still scored 12.43 or whatever it was. So really, really, now that I've remembered that, that is um, quite crazy. Yeah, seven points from Tavita Totola. It makes trade plans a bit easier this week. We're probably going to be looking to move someone like Bofamoron or, or 
Morgan Smithy, someone like that. But Tavita Totola going down makes it all a bit easier for me. So we'll get to that. But yeah, seven points, quite quite unfortunate. You can't be too disappointed because stuff like that happens. Injuries happen. On the bench, Sam Hughes, 33. Not the best, but again, it's fine for Cash Gen. He's got a break even of minus 13. So he's going to keep going up in price. Viliami Fafita sitting in there as my nuff. So nothing from him, but that is fine. In the second row department, Jack DeBellin, who we, we did a late switch to Jake, De, Jake Jack DeBellin, from Angus Crichton. We had Angus Crichton as one of our trades. And then before the game, I'm like, you know what? Let's give Crichton another week just to make sure that he is going to lock down the 80 minute position. And we'll go Jack DeBell in one of my pod shouts who I was really keen on. Uh, not the best in hindsight, you know, Angus Crichton played the 480 and scored really, really well. Jack DeBellin scored his lowest score of, I think the season with a 53. It's not an awful score. It's not bad at all. It's not like a complete waste of a trade. Uh, I think he's just going to be a good plotter to sit in there. Maybe for the season, who knows? But for now, 53, not the best, but hey, we'll, we'll take it. It's, it's not bad at all. Josh Curran, he scored 64 for us this week. Still using him in our second row department. Uh, look, there's actually not too many gun second rowers out there. You can look at your Ellie Katoas and Dev Fafitas, but the, they've all got problems. Like Katoa scored 42 last week or something like that. Fafita, not playing 80, still really high priced and in a pretty shocking Titans team. It's quite tough to, you know, really flip over to him. So Curran scoring 64 in my second row. Happy for that. Kai Pierce Paul, 82. We've been waiting for some attacking stats. We knew they were in him. He came up with them big in this game. Really happy with that 82 points. Didn't quite get the try that I tipped him for, but uh, I'm not sure if he actually got the try assist for, for the Bradman best try, but he did all the hard work, the, the line break, the, the tackle breaks, the offload, the try contribution, etc. So really happy with an 82. On the bench, both for more. We kept him in the squad again, 71 points. So now he's also got to have a pretty low break even, 13 break even. So honestly, he's going to make even more cash. He'll stay in for another week or two. Not sure I'll play him. Of course, those stats are enhanced by the fact that the Titans played essentially 90 minutes against the Raiders and he played all 90 of those minutes, if I'm not mistaken. So 71 points. I mean, really good for, for cash gen. Didn't play it, but that's fine. Morgan Smithy, 68. He's plodding along incredibly well. I think I'm just going to sit him there for a long time, to be honest, maybe even for the, um, the sort of buy rounds. He's, he's just good to have in there as solid points and as, as a backup. If any of my second rows go down 68, once again, didn't play that, but Hey, we get that Joe Chan. We'll get to it. Quite exciting. Obviously didn't play once again, hasn't played since round two. So we haven't got any price rises out of him, but has been named this week for the storm. So we might finally get that long awaited price rise out of Joe Chan. In the halves department, we didn't end up captaining Nico Hines. He scored 82, which is a, a decent captain score. Not too upset with that. Doubled to 164. So not, not an awful captain score at all. Luke Brooks, 49 as my reserve. It's not great, but it, it's not the worst. It was up against the Warriors, so I expected less, to be honest. Uh, he did come up with some attacking stats, and then he also threw... He had a try assist to Dallin with Tanning Zalesniak, if that one counted. Um, but yeah, 49, not the best. Obviously going to keep him weak. We've actually been saved a little bit. I was obviously going to trade him to Nathan Cleary if Nathan Cleary was named against the Tigers. And we're back, sorry. Had to get that sneeze out off camera. Uh, yeah, Luke Brooks was going to trade him to Nathan Cleary this week if he was back. But thank God he's not because I really wanted to hold Luke Brooks for this Tigers matchup. And also, if that was the case, I was going to have to boost this week which I don't have to now. So now I get a whole nother boost and hopefully we can move on to Cleary next week and we get Brooks for this Titans game. But 49 for that for last week's performance, not the best, but hey, we move on. Dylan Brown, he upgraded in significantly, 86 points. Look, we've held on to Dylan Brown. There haven't been too many second row, ah, second row, five eighth options that have been standing out. So he's just been sitting in there doing his thing. 86 is his highest score of the season. Happy for that. Really happy for that. Lachlan Galvin, obviously still suspended. Didn't play. No points from him. Into the uh, fire, into the fire, into the center wing department. Valentine Holmes, he scored 73. He scored another try. 73 points. Really good. We'll take it. Roger Tuivasa-Shek, 50 points. Again, no attacking stats. That's all base, but it also was a 90-minute long game. So uh, a little bit enhanced, but hey, 50 points in my center wing from base. We're taking that every day of the week. Jesse Ramian, similar, similar story there. 53 points from him in base and his game didn't go for 90 minutes. So, you know, that's all just from the, uh, from the 80 minutes game against 
Uh, the Rabbitohs last week, happy with that. Hopefully there's ta- attacking stats coming. I really believe in him. He's averaging so well for someone who scored one try this season. So uh, I, I just believe in him. I really do. I'm going to hold him there. James Schiller, we ended up playing 69 points. That was a double he scored as well. So um, not fantastic, but 69 points is still 69 points at face value and incredible cash generation he made. How much... 155.7K. He's got a minus 60 break even. He's expected to make another 100K and just continue to make incredible money. So, hey, 69 points, as I said, face value, just the number. Really happy with it. And he's going to keep making that money. Jack Bostock, we played. He scored 53. I think there was another try in that. Um, I think so. I'm not quite sure. I can't remember. Uh, Not the best. Definitely a viable trade-out option this week. I think with everything that I'm doing, I probably won't. I'll hold him for one more week. Hopefully get some attacking stats out of him uh, this week. Who have they got? They've got the Eels. There's potential there. I don't have the most hope, but I don't think he'll drop too much in price regardless. Uh, But he could be a a trade-out target for a lot of clubs. I understand that. For me, 53 points. Um, Happy to take that for the team, and we'll give him one more week. Ethan Strange, 83. I learned from my mistakes of not playing him the week before, and he scored us some insane junk time points. That was the the story of my week, junk time stats from Ethan Strange, who got up to 83. There was another one who I can't recall who killed it. Might have been Nico Hines who came up with some junk time. Regardless, just, just yeah. Oh, Kalen Ponga, junk time, line break, etc. Lots of stuff for me. Oh, bloody Terrell May had, had some a try assist right at the end of the game too. So just lots of points that came at the end. For those of you who don't know what junk time is, it is just points that come at the end when the result doesn't really matter. Um, and that was the case for a few of my players. Ethan Strange, his junk time points came in the form of a big line break in the last second of, or the last minute of extra time where, yeah, he made that line break and the Raiders went on to win the game. So 83 points, exceptional. Blaze Delungy obviously didn't play. My fullbacks, Kalen Ponga, 91 points. My vice captain did not loop him, which I think I'm fine for. No, it should have looped him. I would have got 33 from Sam Hughes, but look, it's not that deep. It's really not. There's a nine point different, 18 point difference. And then what I lose 11 points. If I took the reserve off Luke Brooks and put it on uh, yeah, and got Sam Hughes. So yeah. Oh, uh, I'm not sure actually what I've lost. To start. Regardless, it didn't happen. We're not going to worry too much about that. Again, I'm happy with the score. I'm not going to loop a 91. I want hundreds plus to, to loop. Charles Nickel Klukstad, our signing of the week. He scored 96. No, uh, try assists, I don't but think so. So I'm pretty sure that was like all base. Um, yeah, insane. I'm really, really happy with the purchase. Obviously, like I was tempted to put him into my pods of the week this week. But the reason I, want, I didn't is because when looking at pods, you're looking at players that you want to trade out. And there's not any fullbacks that you're going to want to trade out for Charles Nickel Klukstad. I was forced to by James Tedesco. Uh, going down injured. So I moved to Chans as my pod, and I'm really, really happy for that. But if you're in a boat that you're holding a, a Pong or a Trebojevic, uh, Drinkwater, any of these players, even Pappenhausen, etc., you're not going to want to trade any of them to a Chans to Klukstad. So he's going to remain at this, what, 0%, 2% he's gone up to. He was in 0% of teams last round. He's going to remain extremely low owned. I think he's going to go on an insane run, and I'm so happy to be one of the very few owners of him. But that is how our team shaped up for round six of the of the season. So we move sort of into our teamless news, which is why I'm looking over here. Once again, got that all up uh, over here that so we can rattle that off for you guys. So just starting with the first game of the round of round seven, that is the Roosters taking on the Storm. In terms of teamless news, Tedesco, of course, he is back from concussion. He moves to fullback. So Joey Manu back to the centers, which means Suali'i back to the wing and Junior Ponga out. So tough for Joey Manu, but everyone sort of knew that was happening. If you went on Joey Manu, you knew it was for that one week play of uh, fullback. And then you've got a tough couple matchups and uh, he's back at center. So... I don't have much sympathy for you guys, and it could still work, work out for you. But yeah, James Tedesco, he's back. Tupanua is sidelined, so Egan Butcher comes onto the bench. Sam Walker still missing the side for the Storm. 
Nelson Asifa Solomona comes in at front row. Tui Kamakamitha, he is out with a calf injury. So, yeah, Nas gets his first run of the season and at starting front row. But the big news for Supercoach, as I said, Joe Chan, he's been named on the bench. Tepo Moreau was out with a back injury. So, Joe Chan... Probably won't get too many minutes, but hey, minutes regardless is just a cash rise, and I'm happy for any sort of cash rise. Hopefully, we can move him on uh, sooner rather than later, but regardless, just any cash rise is good. So, good stuff for us, super coaches, for Joe Chan. For the Dragons, uh, Zach Lomax has been moved to the centers with Christian Tui Pilotu coming onto the wing in the place of who was the winger? Who was the... No, sorry. They missed the center. Jack Bird is out with a HIA. Uh, so, yeah, that moves Lomax into the centers and Tui Pilotu onto the wing. Besides that, not much else happening for the Dragons. For the Warriors, there's not a whole lot happening here either. The only news is that Jazz Tavanga uh, is out of the side with an injury. Adam Pompey has been named at Jersey 17. I'd suspect that to change. I th am hearing whispers around the club that Zion uh, Ma'u... Ma'u... Regardless, he's a, he's a front row. He's a gun front row. If you if you watch the Warriors lowest grades like like I try to do as a Warriors fan, absolute gun. He's a very powerful player. I'm hearing whispers he's going to make his debut this week. Um, so Adam Pompey named at 17. I wouldn't expect it to stay that way, cause especially because Adam Adam Pompey has also been named at centre for New South Wales Cup. So I can't imagine he's going New South Wales Cup then straight back into first grade. I think Zion will make his debut. So take that at face value. But at the moment, Adam Pompey is named at 17. And on, it's just reports, guys. He may still line up at 17. I just don't think that will be the case. But those are the only changes for the Dragons and the Warriors. For the Eels and the Dolphins, of course, Dejan Arcee is still at six, but Blaze Talangi has been named on the interchange. Now, while the Joe Chan naming on the interchange is good, I don't think this is particularly good for super coaches. I'll be looking to trade Blaze Talangi now. I was going to hold him for a week. I don't want him on the bench. It could prove to be a master strike. You know, if anybody gets injured in that back line, he comes in, he plays big minutes. That is a potential. And if that happens, I'm just going to have to cop that. But if not, he's going to play three minutes at the end of the game and probably lose money, uh, which I'm not here for. So I'll be looking to sell him this week. Those are the only changes for the Eels, though. For the Dolphins, there's a few out there. Obviously, Hamaso Tabuifi Doe, he's out for like four to six weeks or something. It could be longer uh, with a, I think it was the hamstring injury. So Trey Fuller, he comes in at fullback for his first game of the season. Not overly super coach relevant. I actually don't even think he's in the super coach app. Uh, he could get an extended run there. And he's a bit of a gun. If you've watched any Queensland Cup, he's a, he's a freak. He's been killing it there for a long, long time. So he could you know, become relevant, but I'd assume if he does get added to super coach, it will be his fullback only. Hopefully we get center wing, but I sort of highly doubt that. Uh, regardless, he is named at fullback for the Dolphins. Beyond that, Max Plath comes back in at 13, not overly relevant. Ray Stone back to the bench. Sean O'Sullivan onto the interchange uh, for Anthony Milford, who drops out. Those are the only changes for those sides. The Panthers and the Tigers. Obviously, Panthers coming off the bye. And as we alluded to earlier, Nathan Cleary has not been named. They're going to give him another week, maybe even two. Who knows? Hamstring injuries are quite hard to sort of judge how long it takes. My hair, it's too long. It doesn't sit in place anymore. I need a haircut. Um, but yeah, Nathan Cleary not in the side. Brad Schneider gets another run at halfback. It's going to be fine for the Panthers. I mean, they've been pretty good with Brad Schneider there. Obviously, they did get the loss to Manly before the bye. But I don't think that's necessarily because they played awfully. I think um, Manly played a really good game of footy. But regardless, they have named Taylor May. There were some rumors floating around that Taylor May was going to get dropped. Uh, it hasn't happened. So, yeah, don't worry about that. Don't buy into rumors before team lists. Like, I don't know. You can hear all this stuff about team list rumors. But honestly, until team list Tuesday happens, it doesn't matter. Then if the rumors circulate after that, maybe start believing in them and, and talk to your sources. But, um... Yeah, if you're hearing stuff before Team List Tuesday, ignore it and wait for Team Lists because uh, Taylor May has been named. So that's good for super coaches who still own him. I am not one of them. Scott Sorensen has been named in the second row. He replaces Luke Garner, who drops back to the bench. Uh, and those are the only changes for the Pan 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 Panthers. Liam Henry is still on the bench. So he's back from concussion or suspension? Concussion. So um, 
Good for him if you still own him, could potentially make money, especially with the news that James Fisher-Harris is leaving the side. I don't imagine that they're going to decrease his minutes. Not that he's been playing the most minutes so far this season, but he has been dealing with a few niggling injuries. But um, potentially they use a bit of the, the early season to get some more minutes into Lindsay Smith and Liam Henry and let them work up because they're probably going to be the two men most likely to replace him next season. And then later in the season, maybe James Fisher-Harris builds back into his minutes and they go on their premiership run. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but potential there for Liam Henry. For the Tigers, not a whole lot going on here. Brent Naden comes in for his first game of the season for Solomon Fartape. Can't imagine too many people owned Fartape, but you might have because he was bottom dollar cheapy. Didn't make too much money. Didn't look overly impressive in the NRL. Uh, so Brent Naden, who again hasn't you know, succeed in his chances in the NRL. He comes in, but maybe he does. Lachlan Galvin, the big one here. He is back from suspension in the 5'8 jersey. So that's fantastic for all us super coaches. Maybe a playable option. I mean, he's been pretty fixture-proof so far this season. But it is against the Penrith Panthers, so who knows? Maybe you're forced to. I'm not sure. Definitely an option. Uh, won't be for me, but we'll get. We'll look a bit more into that in our Sitfi Starts topic. Their forward pack, pretty much the same. John Bateman comes back into the side. Latu Finu and Samuela Finu also come in. So Asu Kapoa and Jake Simpkin and Justin Matamua all drop out. Moving on to the Titans and the Seagulls. The news here, Philip Sammy has been named at fullback for the injured Jaden Campbell. Uh, I like it for the se for the Seagulls, for the uh, Titans. Philip Sammy gets through a lot of work, obviously doesn't have that passing ability, but I think if you've just got that that running game, that dynamic tackle-busting, meter-eating running game from the back, that might be all you need. They might just need to simplify their game plan. AJ Brimson in the in the halves again at 5'8", really good for their side. Not sure how it fully translates to Supercoach. I think I'd be waiting to see the Titans win a few more games before I start purchasing players. But AJ Brimson, he's an option. Like he's he's been he's been a proven gun before, so there is that option there. I do like AJ Brimson as a player. Uh, the center wings, not too much there. Harley Smith Shields, Jojo Fafita. I'm not sure what their prices are at. Maybe options, but again, not looking to buy Titans players until they come good. Dave Fafita, his name to start, but he was also named to start last week and came off the bench. So who knows? Uh, just touch and go with that one. Uh, for the Seagulls, Ruben Garrett comes back from his head knock and Jason Saab also comes back from, I believe it was a hamstring injury. Either way, it was a leg injury, I'm pretty sure. But he comes in. So it's Jackson Polo, the man to make way. Tommy Talao retains his spot in the side. Not too much happening for the rest of their side. Matthew Lodge, actually, no, sorry, Matthew Lodge. That is a big one. Uh, Josh Hallier, he's out suspended for the legs hit on Sean Johnson in the dying minutes of the Seagulls Warriors game. So he's out. Matthew Lodge returns from a... Uh, ACL injury it was. He returns from his ACL injury, first game of the season, named at number 10, starting front row. Nathan Brown also returns on the bench. But again, not too much super coach relevant there. Just just teamless changes, to be honest. Uh, but that's about it for that one. We move on to the Broncos and the Raiders. Trying to get through these a little bit quicker because realistically, if you wanted to know teamless changes, you can look at my Instagram where I post the, the main teamless changes, or you could look at the NRL website and, and go through that yourself, which is essentially what I'm doing here. I'm just looking at what's been named but just putting it in a format for you guys to know. For the Broncos, obviously, Reese Walsh is still in the squad after last week. Uh, I think it's an unchanged team for them. Yes, it is. While the Raiders, Adam Ariota, he comes in at second row for Zach Hosking, what, the once uh, super coach gun for, for two, three weeks there. He's out with probably an extended stint on the sideline with a shoulder injury. So Matty Otta, he comes into the second row there. Uh, potential, I'm not sure what his price is, but he's uh, front row, second row dual, I think. Maybe he's just front row. But potential depending on his price again i wouldn't be wasting trades on that not for me the bulldogs and the knights interesting stuff here Connor Tracy has been retained at fullback with Blake Taft getting named at Jersey 17. So Taft's back. He's just on the bench and Tracy has kept the fullback Jersey. I love that for the Bulldogs. I really do massive, massive Connor Tracy fan. Uh, not sure what it means. Super coach wise. I don't think you're really looking to buy Tracy and I'm not sure many people owned Taft either. Uh, Bronson Jerry, he's still in the centers, which means Kiraz is back on the wing. 
Really good for Kiraz. He's better as a winger than a center, especially super coach wise. Bronson Jerry, very popular option coming into this week. About 345,000. Looked fantastic last week. I assume he keeps that position probably for the season with how he's going. Uh, definitely an option to bring in, uh, but we'll look at that a bit more in depth in the trades department. Sam Hughes, once again, named at starting front row with Chris Patolo. But again, who knows what's going on there? Josh Curran named at Jersey 13. For the Knights, not a whole lot. Greg Marju was a late inclusion last week, so he's uh, technically an inclusion this week. We should mention him. Uh, wouldn't be buying him just yet. I mean, you could. It's against the Dogs, but the Dogs haven't been a, a pushover this season. So, yeah, again, just take that with a grain of salt. But definitely an option sort of down the track with how he's going. Let him lose some cash, and then I'm looking to pick him up in a week or two, hopefully, as well. Beyond that, not much else for the uh, for the Knights there. So we move into the Sharkies and the Cowboys. Now for the Sharks, Sione Katoa is out suspended, I believe it is. So uh, Samuel Stone Street comes in to make his NRL debut. So congratulations to Stone Street. Not really relevant for us super coaches because he's only probably going to be in there for the one game. Uh, but yeah, just really good for him. Kel Eero once again keeps his spot in the centers. So that's a massive win for super coaches. Probably the most purchased player this week, I'd presume. Uh, and for good reason, to be honest. Beyond that, not too much for their side. Braden Hamlin, ULA, makes his first appearance of the season at prop on the on, on the interchange. Sorry, not at prop. But he will be playing as a prop on the oh, off the interchange. Uh, for the Cowboys, Sammy Vellame, the gun of last season. He comes in on the wing for Murray Talangi, who was out with, I'd say, either a calf or a uh, hamstring injury. Regardless, he's out. Uh, so, yeah, Sammy Vellame in. And that's it for that one. And that wraps us up for all the team list news for, um, for round seven. So we'll move into our trade talks. Now, as we've started doing, as we did last week, we start our trade talks with the pod options. So as we know, again, it's a bit of a segue to my Instagram. If you guys aren't following the Instagram, please go and do so. There's a lot more content coming there and some content that, you know, you, you don't need these bloody long videos to engage with, to make informed decisions, especially super coach wise. So the first of these is our pod. As you can see here on the, on the screen, we have our, yeah, our best buys round seven point of difference players. So last week we went through and we named Jack DeBellin, Nick Meany, and Wade Egan. Now, uh, Nick Meany didn't go fantastic, but again, I still believe in him as a pod purchase for anyone who did pick him up. I think he'll go good over these next couple weeks. Wade Egan did go really well, uh, again, in a 90-minute performance, so minutes inflated, uh, points inflated, and... Jack DeBellin, the only one of the pods that I picked up personally, was sort of average. But again, you're buying these pods not for a one-week player. They're for the, for the season for at least the five weeks, which is why we look at their five weeks fixtures. This week, we'll be looking at Victor Radley, Cameron Munster, and Dallin Watene Zalesniak. So as, as you can see there, there is Victor Radley, all these points and stuff up there. You guys can read through that of your own will. I'm going to read through uh, the sort of stuff that I've written about him, wrote about him on the right-hand side here. So Victor Radley, 596,000 to RF only. I said... Coming off a 103 score against the Knights last week, many could see this as chasing last week's points. But in reality, Victor the Inflictor has been putting up some fantastic super coach stats so far in 2024. He's played 80 minutes in every game this se this year, aside from the Sinbin affected Bulldogs game, and his lowest score, just 55 points. He's basing 60 across his last three games, so he has an elite floor, and between his ball playing and his try scoring at and his try scoring, attacking stats are no stranger. Definitely a left field pick, but Radley could very well be a keeper in the 2RF this season and a great upgrade option for those looking to sell their peaking mid-range 2RFs. So as, as I said, for the visual learners, uh, for those watching the YouTube, you can see all this. For those listening, these are all up on the Instagram, so head up over there and you can see what I'm talking about. We've got the ownership, PPM, average, break-even, upcoming opponents, his graph, everything that you need and you want to know when you're purchasing a player in Supercoach. So that's all up on the Instagram, so go check that out at Chip and Chase Podcast. But we'll move on to the second of our pod options, Cameron Munster. So Cameron Munster, 728,000, 5 only. 
I've gone and said, the 5'8 King is back. We all know Munster is a super coach gun. The only reason he makes this list is due to his extremely low ownership. I'm sure at some stage everyone will own him, but if you get the jump on him early, it could be a move to set you apart from the rest of the competition. The Storm's upcoming draw is is very appealing, but the best part about Munster is that he is fixture-proof, often saving his best games for the tougher competition. 5-8th is a tough position at the moment, so now could be the perfect time to jump on Munster and set yourself up for the rest of the season. Once again, all stats up on screen, but yeah, Munster, uh, just talking a little bit more about him. I mean, we all know he's a super coach gun. Everybody wants to own him. In fact, he was in my first draft of the side before you know, the, the stuff came out about his injury. So, can I set up a bit a bit more? My bad. Um, yeah, he was in my first draft of my side. I really wanted to start the season with him before everything sort of transpired. Playing really well. Came off a 90-something performance last week uh, against the... Who'd they take on? The Bulldogs. I think he could be the perfect sort of 5'8 position uh, player, I suppose, you know, until Brown, better performance this week, but still not going great. Okay, maybe Cameron Munster's just set and forget, put him in there and just ride the season. Uh, so, yeah, really good option at 5'8", especially if you want to get, as I said, get the jump on early and be a bit different. The last of our players in our pod series for round seven is Dallin or Tene Zalesniak. Again, stats up on screen, but I'll read through what I've said. Even in the game that the Warriors did it tough, DWZ scored 91 points against the Seagulls. With CNK back and a soft draw upcoming, it reads very well for multiple 100-point games over the next five weeks. And at only 3% owned, picking him up now could be the perfect move to move you up the rankings and win your head-to-head -head matchups. The best part? You'll be locked Locking in a set and forget keeper in your center wing only a quarter of the way through the season. With Bostock now peaked in price, DWZ could be your could be your ticket to fortune. Again, everything I've said runs true. I don't need to say too much more about DWZ. That's why I write these for for you guys tuning in on Instagram. There's just a bit more information, and then yeah, the stats that are part of the post. So I'm not going to spend any much any more time on these. Uh, Point of difference players, but yeah, once again, if you aren't following the Instagram, head over there. There's going to be more content like this upcoming, and I want you guys to tell me what content that you guys want to want, want to see, and uh, we, we will try and make that happen because I do need to post a lot more to the Instagram. I'm just struggling to sort of find what exactly will fit my niche uh, the best, but right now I'm really happy with how these these pod players are, are going. And just the design of my my podcast of, of these posts in general. So show them some love. Send me some messages. Drop some comments. Maybe you know. Maybe we can look forward and do a a point of difference player that that you guys decide yourselves. And you can send that through, and we can we can work through some content there. So yeah, show these some love. Follow the Instagram. But we'll get back to the rest of the buys and the rest of the trade talks for this season, for this week, I should say. So personally, for myself, you know what. Uh, Let's just look at the most traded in in general. So most traded in this week, Kale Eero traded in by 19.9% .9 of players. Fair enough. N negative 76 break even. He's 219K. He's essentially bottom dollar. He's scoring well, 46 in pure base last week and 90 something the week before that. It's, it's a trade in. It's the best trade in target. You don't have to do it if you're pretty happy with your cash generation. Like, look, I've sitting here with essentially Schiller, Strange, and Talangi, who are bottom dollar cheapies, and they're all sitting in there. Uh, but I want to ride this Kaylee Rowe train, not just for the for the money, but for the points. I think he's a genuine play option if he retains that position. There's a little bit of risk involved, but personally, I'm going to take that risk. I don't want Blaze Talangi named off the bench, so I'm going to trade him out. Two, as we just mentioned, Kale Eero, come into the, why, why, there we go, come in, make me a little bit of cash there, Kale Eero is into the side. Now, what else have we got down here? Angus Crichton is the second most traded in player, well, would you look at that? I'm trading in Angus Crichton, guys, I mean, I was going to do it last week, I backflipped, I regret it. But he's coming in now. So I'm not doing anything out of the ordinary. Jack DeBellin will move to my front row and I will bring in round six points. He scored 79, I believe it was 79, 459K. Angus Crichton comes into my second row. And those are my two trades this week, guys. Nothing out of the ordinary. We've just gone through and set our pod plays. Uh, 
I haven't followed any pod plays this week, but keep in mind last week I did get on Jack DeBellin as a pod. And also I brought in Charles Nickel Klukstad. Now with Charles Nickel Klukstad, as I said, I would have included him in the in the best buys for pods this week as well. But you need an option to trade him to. And if you are sitting pretty with your fullbacks, you're not trading anyone out. I had the luxury, I had the luxury fortune, whatever you want to call it, of Tedesco going down injured. So I was forced to make that trade. I've jumped on Nickel Klukstad. So there's my pods. Last week, I went hard on them. This week, you can call it following the crowd. I wouldn't call it following the crowd. It's doing it for a reason. Like, if you're not following this to be different, you might be setting yourself behind. Getting on Kale Eero and getting on uh, where Angus Crichton, I think, almost must-haves. Maybe not must-haves, but I think they're really good options, at, especially at their price point. So they're the two trades this week. Nothing out of the ordinary, just bolstering the side. I'm really happy with the rest of the side. I think I've got a great mixture of, of guns and pods and, and mid ranges and money making. I'm really happy with how the side's set up and we're going to move you know forward with that. Looking a bit more in the traded in section, Tamari Martin is the next most traded in. Now, you guys would know if you watched last week, I... Did a lot of edging, a, a lot of um, alluding to a, a pot option that I was going to talk about, a pot option that my girlfriend was also quite keen on. That player was, in fact, Tamare Martin. Uh, she ended up picking him up last week, which is why I was talking about this. I think it's a, a really good play. I didn't include him in my pod list this week. A couple of reasons. I didn't want too many warriors. That would have been my third warrior in two weeks in my posts. And the other being a lot of people have jumped on it. So it's not that different. He's still a pod for sure, I believe. What's his ownership? 5% of teams. So definitely still a, a pod option. But so many people are jumping on it. I don't hate it. Uh, you, you, you're making good money. He scored 72 last week and uh, no, almost 100 the week before, 90 something. He's 363K, good money incoming, minus 59 break even. So yeah, massive money incoming. He's fullback eligible as well if you ever need to put him in fullback. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it's just another trade. I'm happy with Dill Brown and Lachlan Galvin in there, but I can see why people are bringing him in and I can see why my girlfriend brought him in last week. As I said, he was going to make the, the pods uh, post this week. But regardless, yeah, he's the third most traded in player, not in my team. Bronson Jerry is up next. As I said, 345K. I like him as a trading option. If you're moving someone like Jack Bostock to him, you're making money for someone who's going to make more money and potentially a, a play option played really well last week with an 87 score. So there's options there. I, I like him as a trade in. Uh, I'm not doing it cause I'd have to boost for it this week. I'm happy with the Kale Eero trade and the, uh, and the Angus Crichton trade. And I don't want to boost for someone like Bronson Jerry, but if you're in a position that you can bring him in within your normal trades and not boost for it, I like it. I'm not sure if I was in anyone's position, if I'd boost for someone like Bronson Jerry, because there's still a bit of uncertainty around him. We don't know how he's going to score. Yeah, he played really well last week. Is that going to happen? Is he going to be on the side for too much longer? It's all just a bit of a wait and see with that Bulldog side. Uh, but regardless, he's not a bad trade-in target this week. Joey Manu is next. Don't like it. 760K back in the centers. Tough run to come. I really do don't see it. I understand if you got on him last week for that game at fullback and you did well, you profited off it. He made money and he scored 117. He's doing well. I don't like his draw to come. I don't like him out in the centers and people who say, yeah, but if you buy him now, you can hold him for the um, origin period where you'll play fullback. I'm not 100% convinced James Tedesco gets picked at fullback. And if you're buying Joseph Manu now, like for their tough run in the hopes that he's going to be the fullback and score hundreds through that origin period, you might be shit out of luck. Cause if Teddy doesn't get picked for origin, Manu's playing center again. And yeah, look, he's still, he's still a decent option to have in your, in your playing center wing for the, um for the origin period. But at 760 K, I, I don't see that as a good trade in target. I do not like the Joey Manu target. If you're doing it, go at your own volition but know that I've advised against it. Not for me is Joey Manu. Sean Johnson, interesting in there again as one of the most traded in. I don't hate it. Again, Warriors are playing really well. He came off a 95 last week. He scored tries. He scored three tries in his last two games and is only uh, probably averaging just a bit over 100. I don't really like it. I don't hate it. You know, Warriors have a, a good run. Johnson's playing incredible footy. And he could just keep scoring these, but he does have to do a lot to score. He is priced about 100K less than Nathan Cleary and Cleary's out for another week. So you could just jump on early onto Sean Johnson. 
But again, not really for me. But I, it's it's if you do it, it's a pod shout, and I don't hate it. I mean, I'm Sean Johnson's biggest fan in the world, have been since day dot. Um, so I'm never going to shit talk him too much. But yeah, not for me. Zach Lomax is the other most traded in. Don't like that. He's on the. Uh, back in the centers this week, I should say. Not sure how his point scoring goes in the centers. We just got to be quite wary of that, guys. So don't expect him to be hitting the the points he's been doing on the wing in the centers. He might, but you know, there's a bit of caution there. And at 755k, yeah, a bit worrying. Look, getting the most traded out, or oh, not in my team. So, oh, sorry, in my team, Jack Bostock. A lot of players selling him. That's really good shout. He's probably peaked in price. You could keep him for one more week, um, but yeah, I don't mind selling him this week. I'll keep him for one just because of my other trade uh, options this week. But yeah, Jack Bostock, I like him as a sell. Luke Brooks is being sold this week. I'm not the biggest fan of it because he comes up against the Titans and he could go really well. And also, like, who are you trading him to? Sean Johnson? Sure. Um, but surely you just wait a week and let him, you know, kill it against the against the Titans. In saying that, I guess Sean's got a 23 break even, so it could be the time to jump on Sean Johnson. Regardless, Luke Brooks, not for me. Joe Chan, people selling him. I don't understand that. He's literally just been named and making money. Uh, but regardless from that, that's sort of the uh, the trade talks out of the way. As you can see, yeah, as, as you guys know, Kale Eero, he has come in for me, and a, as has Angus Crichton. So we'll move into our sit V star options. Now, mainly talking about my team here, I can't look at everybody's side and decide who's the best players for your squad. But if you're in a similar boat to me and you have similar players to me, then this can be quite a help to you. Now, based on what, like the upcoming matchups, I am quite happy to sit. Oh, I'm quite happy to play Kale Eero against the Cowboys. Not necessarily because the Cowboys are a bad team, but because Kale Eero is basing fantastically. The Sharks are playing some decent footy. He can find some attacking stats. He can score well. So I'm going to play Kale Eero, obviously playing Raimi and Holmes and Tui Vasashek. They're my guns. I'm not going to play Jack Bostock against the Eels, I don't think. He could find attacking stats, but if he doesn't, he's going quite low. So I think I'm going to slap a reserve on both for more. Titans, who have they got? Manly. Uh, am I quite confident in 71? No. I'm going to slap it on Morgan Smithies instead because Fairmore played 90 minutes and scored 71. Smithies played 75 or 80 minutes and scored three less points. So Morgan Smithies, he'll get a reserve for me. If you're in the same boat, I'd go Smithies over Fairmore. But hey, Titans could be coming good and Fairmore could find attacking stats. Um, potential, not for me. Joey Lusick, also not going to get a play. He scored a try. Cool. Not going to play him again this week. Luke Brooks, 100% playing him against the Titans. Really happy for that matchup. And I'm really happy that Cleary isn't playing. So I didn't have to, you know, go the, go early on that Luke Brooks trade. So the last one comes down to, I guess, my center wing options. Chance to go cloak start, obviously. He, he, sorry, Chance, you, you're going to get a start this week. We'll get to that. But... Who am I playing out of my center wings as my last reserve? Now, I could throw one of these reserves on Bo Fermore and just go base. It's not a bad shout. I'm tempted to do it. The other option is I go for one center wing here and I go for whoever I think is going to score the most points. Now, the problem with the Raiders is that they're up against the Broncos. James Schiller scored two tries last week and only scored 69. Not ideal. Ethan Strange has been on a tear, 83 and 90-something in his last two games. But again, can he do it against the Broncos? I'm not so sure. Jack Bostock, not been on that much of a tear. Uh, he's scoring like 50, 60s with tries, and they come up against the Eels, who seem to be a bit rejuvenated. Decent side regardless. Do I want to play Jack Bostock? Not sure. So do I want to play any of these? Do I want to run that risk and hope one of them finds attacking stats? Potentially, I've got enough base in my other players. Do I want to play Galvin, who has been playing some really good footy? Maybe not. Maybe. He's against the Panthers, so maybe not for me. I'm going to be safe. It's a bit boring. I think I'm going to slap the last reserve on Bo Fermor. Oh, no. He's been scoring four. It's tough. No, nah, let's go for attacking upside. Let's go. Let's go Jack Bostock. I've just slandered him, and after all that, he's getting my last reserve. Look, I don't really like it against the against the Eels, but I think Trey Fullery, he's got a bit of ball playing about him. If they sweep to that left-hand edge, they could find Bostock and could cross for a try, and he could score points. Both are more, 
based really well last week and you know he scored 71 the week before that as well i think yeah double 71 yep uh but again he played 90 minutes last week and the week before that he had a try and a line break assistance still only scored 71 so he could literally be scoring 40s as a second rower and if you're scoring 40s in base sh sure but why not go for a little bit of upside and go for someone like jack bostock so that's what i'm gonna do this week if you're on a similar boat that that's the way i lean um Go for a bit of upside, but go for the player that you back in your gut. If you back Ethan Strange, if you back James Schiller, if you're in my boat, go for one of them. I'm just going to say Jack Bostock matchup-wise, I like that a little bit better than the, the two Raiders boys against the Broncos. Um, so we'll move in to, is it my captain options now? It is indeed. So essentially every game this year, except for last week, I'm pretty sure, I've looped. Uh, maybe that's not the case. I think week one, maybe I, I took my captain score as well instead of a loop. Um, but I've been looping a lot, and that's because there have been a lot of good early matchups that I can uh, gravitate towards. This week, not so much. Roosters and Storm, two good sides, two, you know, two teams with a lot of captain options, a lot of great players. But they verse each other. Is there going to be that many attacking stats? Who really knows? I need to make sure this is still recording. Indeed, it is. My hair looks awful. We move on. Um, yeah, so I'm not gravitating towards any Roosters or Storm players. Not that I own many anymore. Don't have Tedeschi. Tedeschi? Teddy? Teddy Tedesco. Don't have him anymore, so not captaining him. Don't own Pappenhausen. Not captaining him. Not owning a Munster. Munster could be good. We've just talked about how he gets up for the big games. So a VC on Munster, if you own him, is good. But he's very low owned. So I can't imagine too many people watching this own Cameron Munster. Dragons and Warriors. That is a really good game matchup-wise for captains. Now, if you have Sean Johnson, definitely worth a VC on there. You could even straight captain him. But there are better options coming later in the round. For me, owning Charles Nickel Klukstad let's spoil it. I'm going to straight captain for the first time this season, a player playing in the early rounds. I think Charles Nickel Klukstad against the Dragons is going to put on a show. He's got about 145 against them last year at this same venue. I see them putting on a clinic. They're going to want to bounce back. I know they got the draw. It wasn't that bad of a performance, but they're going to want to bounce back from their performance against Manly. I think they come up with a big one here. They could put the Dragons away quite extensively, and Chance is going to be the catalyst for that. A lot of sweeping plays out the back. If you own a Dallin or Tene Zalesniak, if you jump on him as a pod, definitely worth a VC or a captain as well. I'd VC him just to be safe. Um, but Chance is a good clock start. He has really good base, so he can't go too low, and I think he comes with some attacking stats. So I mean, 96 last week, 88 the week before that, and no tries in those games, so... Who knows? Charles de Gaulle looks that he's my captain this week, but we'll keep going through just in case you guys have some other options. Parramatta Dolphins, not really any options there. We skip over that. Panthers Tigers, not really any options there. If you own Dylan Edwards, like my girlfriend does, because she is a better super coach player than me, Dylan Edwards is a really good shout. I think Panthers get a good win here coming off the bye. Dylan Edwards is their goal kicker. He's ascend I'm pretty sure he's scoring the most points of anyone in Supercoach this season. Uh, so Dylan Edwards, I really like that. But again, not many people own him, so we'll, we'll gloss over that. But yeah, Dylan Edwards, definitely a good captain option. The big one is, of course, going to be Tom Trebojevic against the Titans. Now, as a non-Tom non Trebojevic owner, I am terrified of that game. I'm going to be watching it behind my chair. I think it's the best option this week. I would be putting a C on him. And if you own a... Um, I guess a Warriors or a, or a Roosters or a Storm player, put a VC on them. Um, but yeah, Tom Trebojevic, best option this week, in my opinion. Even Daily Cherry Evans or a Ruben Garrick. They're good little pod shouts there too. Broncos, Raiders, not anyone I'd be looking at if you own Reese Walsh, potentially, but not for me. Uh, Bulldogs, Knights. Definitely Kalen Ponga is a good captain shout. I own Kalen Ponga, so I could do it. I just don't think the Bulldogs are the pushover that we expected them to be. I also th am hearing stuff that Kalen Ponga might not be goal kicking because of the hip pointer injury. And that, you know, takes his scores down a little bit as well. So I'm gravitating away from that one, but it's an option. It's definitely not a bad option. It's a decent matchup, and we know KP is a proven gun. Lastly, Sharks, Cowboys. You could go Nico Hines. Nothing's wrong with going Nico Hines for the last game of the season, uh, for, of the season, of the round. He scores well even when he's not playing well. 
And if you own Scott Drinkwater, also another option there. Uh, Cat, the Sharks can concede points, so Scotty Drinkwater is an option. Even Valentine Holmes is an option. I own Val, I own Hines. I could put the captain on them, but I'm going straight on my gut. Charles Nickel Clookstar. Uh, yeah, Charles Nickel Clookstar is my captain. Set and forget, that's what I'm doing. So that one actually wraps us up. Once again, Thank you guys for tuning into these. This has been getting a lot of love, a lot of support on the uh, on the YouTube, especially, which I really appreciate, guys. I am truly grateful for all of you tuning in. Um, and once again, if you're not following the the Instagram, please go and do so. Interact with me, message me. We're getting a, a lot more traction there, a lot more of you reaching out, and I really I appreciate it so much. I really love. Uh, just talking to you guys and giving my advice and hearing how you guys are doing. It's, it's awesome. I love interacting with you guys. So if you're not following me on there, please go and do so. Again, there's got to be more content for you guys to engage with, a lot more super coach stuff. And you can just, you can comment on these videos, comment on the YouTube, message me on the Instagram, comment on the post, whatever you want to do. But if you want to ask a few questions, ask away. I'm all for it, guys. Uh, but yeah, that one will wrap us up. So we'll be back again next week for our next um, super coach content. In between then, of course, we'll have all of our previews coming up over the next few days. But once again, thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next time.